We see a lot of Uncanny Automator users set up recipes to pass WooCommerce order and product data over to Google Sheets. It's really easy to set up this type of recipe to build e-commerce reports, so in this video we'll walk through the basics. Let's start off with a brand new recipe. We use a logged in recipe type, meaning the recipe is connected to a WordPress user. This allows us to use a trigger in the free version of Uncanny Automator, so the entire recipe can be set up with Uncanny Automator alone. The recipe already has a name, so the next step is to choose our trigger. Since we want the recipe to run when customers buy a product in WooCommerce, we'll choose the WooCommerce integration. After choosing WooCommerce, we'll see a list of all the triggers available to us. We'll run this recipe when a user completes an order for a product, so we'll choose this trigger here. Now we need to choose the exact trigger condition. There are three options. Pays for runs when payment is collected. Completes is for when the associated order has a completed status. And landing on a thank you page fires when a user submits an order and lands on the confirmation page. For many sites, these conditions might not sound that different, but perhaps when a store has physical products that are shipped or when payment is made after purchase, the variety of options can be helpful. For this recipe, we'll choose completes. Then let's go ahead and run the recipe for any product sale. In the action section, we'll add a new action that sends data to Google Sheets, so we'll choose the Google Sheets integration. Let's quickly switch over to the Google Sheet that I created for this recipe. That way we have context for what I'll set up in the next action. You'll see the spreadsheet is blank except for the first row, where I've added columns for product title, product price, product quantity, order date, and order ID. That will keep things simple for the recipe, but still give us some useful data. Now let's go back to the recipe. I want to use the spreadsheet that I just showed, so I'll select it here and use the first worksheet. Next up, and this is really important, we need to click this red Get Columns button. This returns a list of columns into the recipe from the Google Sheet, so we know what columns are available and we can map data to them. You'll see that Automator now sees the five columns that we just showed in Google. Now we'll map each of them to tokens from the trigger. Remember, when the trigger is fired, information about what triggered it is available to the actions. For the first column, we'll open up the tokens, then under the trigger section, find the product title. There are dozens of trigger tokens available for everything related to the product in the order that you might ever need, but we'll just choose the data that's required for this recipe. Next, the product price column. We'll go into the triggers again, then choose the price token. Okay, you get the idea, so let's just skip ahead to show the three other tokens populated. And that's it. We'll make the recipe live, and now every time someone purchases a product, the records will be passed over to Google Sheets. To test this out, I just went ahead and purchased a product in the background. If I switch over to my Google Sheet, you'll see that Automator populated the expected data about the product that was purchased. That's it. Now whenever you want it, you'll be able to view updated product purchase reports in Google Sheets. Remember that you can use this recipe concept to pass any data you want to Google Sheets from keeping a record of site logins to course completions or even all of your form submissions.